Hi guys, I am live. Uh, I'm Dr. Katyal from Best Orthodontic Seminars and Sessions and I'm live from Hamilton Island today uh, where I've been attending an orthodontic conference and presenting as well um, and I just wanted to uh, share something with you all today especially when it comes to designing your ClinCheck plans with Invisalign. Um, and today, one of the focus is a case that I've been asked to coach or mentor. And, um, you know, I've tried to take all identification out of it. So what I really want to highlight is so many areas that this ClinCheck um, would have underperformed. And it was easily ignored by a lot of um, clinical teams that were preparing this ClinCheck for this dentist. Um, and the dentists themselves, actually. So, um, by the way, there's a beautiful sunrise just behind me. And the whole place is just magical. I think you can see it. Uh, Hamilton Island's been just the best thing I've done for the last uh, year. And I've had spent a week here. It's been amazing. So let's get to this clean check, okay? So I've got this dentist who's asked me to coach this case. And I'm going to go back to the pre-treatment. So I'm going to show you this win window. And we're going to go all the way back. I'm sorry. Uh, here we go. This is the pre-treatment condition of the patient. Okay, let's ignore all attachments, all IPR for now. This is the buckle shot. So you can see this is a 17-year-old young adult patient. It's a class 2, division 2, malocclusion with deep bite. Let's see the left side buckle shot. Same thing. The class 2 is more full unit on this side than the right side. It's a little bit more half class 2 or 3 quarters. So obviously there's a midline discrepancy, which sometimes you can't see easily, but it, it is slightly there. Okay, just the lower midline slightly off. This patient also has a relatively good smile arc. So... You know, the upper incisors are something you really don't want to intrude too much and uh, not, not more than a millimeter anyways. So what we have here is firstly to work out what we're going to do. It's a young adult, so the chance for growth modification is kind of past. I think this person's about 17 years old. Um, however, there are still certain things you can do, okay, to correct the class too. The other thing is we've got a deep bite. So how are we going to resolve this? It is obviously skeletal as well as dental. And uh, if the patient weren't to go for surgery, you know, you've only got a few options. So here, the clean check that was first given, and let's watch this movie. Uh, the movie is always very fascinating. Let's have a look. This is the clean check that's been gone through a lot of revisions uh, by this clinical team. And, uh, you know, they've sent the dentist this. And the dentist contacted me and said, look, I'm not happy. Can you please help here? So what you're seeing here, if you look at this clean check, the upper incisors, let's do a superimposition, have been intruded a lot. If we grid it, they've been intruded about five millimeters. That is nearly impossible, okay, to do with just plastic. All right, so five millimeters of intrusion has been planned. Let's take the grid off. Let's take the super off. Let's look at the lower incisors. Did they plan any intrusion here? We're just looking at deep bite. Yes, they did. How much is that? About two to three millimeters. That's biologically possible. Maybe a half of that is, but it can be, it can happen. But what they did is had literally no extrusion in the posterior area. Okay? Blue is where pre-treatment is, white is end of treatment. Literally no extrusion in posterior area. This is um, not going to work. Okay, so if you don't do relative extrusion here, which is literally like um, you are erupting your posterior teeth, your premolars, and intruding your anterior. If you don't do relative intrusion, um, sorry, yeah, extrusion and intrusion in a young adult, you're not going to have a successful uh, deep bite correction. Okay, first principle is let's look at the bite. So we know it's been planned completely wrong, uh, looking at small aesthetics for deep bite. Okay, 
Let's look at class two correction now. What happened? How did they correct the class two? So we're going to look at it from this angle. Let's play the movie. And what you're seeing is a bit of proclination of upper and lower incisors. And then there's retraction. And somehow magically they're retracted. And it's, it's, it just, you know, baffles me. How did this happen? Where did the space come from? Sure enough, if I look at it, and I'm going to show you the attachment, they planned some IPR, which I think is an overkill for this young adult case. Uh, and somehow, magically, class 1 molar has been created. Let's look at this side. This side, they've left it as class 2, actually. They didn't correct it. So, and again... To me, this is not a social six case, okay? So this dentist wanted to do a social six treatment, and I said, no, this is not what you do for this patient because there's opportunity here that will be missed to correct the class two, okay? So we are going to help correct it. So this side has been left class two. That side's kind of corrected to class one. The smile aesthetics are wrong. The deep bite opening is wrong, and... Um, I mean, do you think you'll get a successful social six treatment out of this? I doubt it. So um, what my recommendations were to this dentist were to go back and, um, you know, understand how you are going to correct class two. Are you going to distalize the upper arch? Are you going to use class two elastics? Are you going to um, use some other forces like mini screws? So you have to understand um, how you can move buckle segments, especially young adults are different to growing adolescents, okay? So, you know, the opportunity of growth modifications passed, and in my opinion, um, I said, you know, let's do some distalization. Also with the deep bite, you can see there was no extrusion done of the lower posteriors and literally no attachments in the lower posteriors as well. These attachments um, on 4.4 four and 4.5, they're not extrusion attachments, actually. They're optimized attachments for rotation. And what these premolars really need is extrusion, okay? It's a brachyfacial case. Same, this 3.4, that's a good attachment. That will extrude that tooth. However, it's intruding, okay? 3.5 has actually got, again, an optimized rotation attachment and... Again, it's not extruding. So um, it's a completely wrong design plan. Five millimeter of intrusion, that is just way too excessive. Even if it's overcorrected, I think it's the wrong approach here. Uh, those black dots are telling you too much intrusion has been planned here. Okay, those black dots are telling you intrusion three millimeter, each two, how much has been planned. Um, and also, uh, one key thing here, I'm going to take the super off. A lot of class twos, let's go to pre-treatment, tend to have this 1-6 and 2-6 kind of rolled in a little bit. And just by derotating those posteriors, you can easily create 1-2 to two millimeter space in the arch. Derotating those upper second premolars, you can create space in the arch. So we won't even need that much distalization in this case. So really, I think... Um, it, it's a class 2 correction case, di uh, probably diagnosed wrong, treatment plan wrong, and, and doomed for failure. So, um, guys, I urge you, if you are going to use my coaching services, from what I understand, um, Invisalign has, uh, uh, there's only two pathways for general dentists to credit with Invisalign. One of them is going directly through Invisalign, another one's going through a, a partner company. And what I really recommend here is if you'd like me to coach and mentor you is to go through the um, Invisalign themselves because um, I'm able to access your clean checks um, and I'm able to give you a lot more guidance. You have the 3D tools there that I can pick up, I can use. Um, this clean check actually came with no 3D tools. I really can't do anything. And um, I really urge that if you are looking at accreditation process, go straight through Invisalign. Um, they have a great clinical support team. I'm able to coach and mentor you on top of that. And, um, yeah, anyone going through partner company, think about it. There are some repercussions because, um, firstly, boss is not able to mentor or coach some of those cases. Um, and, secondly, you know, you don't have the support of 
a bigger clinical advisory service that Invisalign can provide. So, um, yes, guys, so this is my little hot tip for class two deep by young adult with Invisalign. Um, there's other things really with this clean check and they're minor, but uh, the whole thing was about how do we open deep by, how do we correct the class two. And this one actually had, if you see here, IPR planned as well, and I'm just going to put the dot on. And that's really excessive IPR as well, 0.5 millimeter just to reduce the overjet when you can distalize a little bit and you can derotate and expand and create space. So um, I think it was an overkill with this clean check. Um, from what I understand, uh, this dentist did approach the clinical advisory service of the partner um, accreditation company, and um, they still thought that this was a good setup. And I, and I really think this is a, a, a quite a bad setup. So it will not give you the result that you want. And... Um, and I'm glad that I was able to help here. And hopefully you guys learned something from me sharing this with you today. Um, and if you need um, any help, uh, if you'd like to some, come to some of our courses, if you'd like to uh, approach me for anything, please feel free to email info at breakthroughwithboss.com or uh, just visit our website, www.breakthroughwithboss.com. We're also on Facebook. Uh, in our business page, we also have closed groups where dentists can put up certain cases and we can answer some questions. The closed group is only limited to dentists and dental professionals. We don't allow industry people in. And, um, yeah, so follow us, join us. We're also um, everywhere on social media. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me comment or feedback if you have and what I can do better to make sure I can convey certain messages clearer. Thank you, guys. Bye. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to work out how to get out of this.